I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn how to create histogram. Test scores of 25 students is given below 65, 76, 82, 87 and so on till 77, 79. Now these are called raw scores, they are not arranged in any way, right? So these are the scores of 25 students. Based on these marks, you need to answer the following questions. So the first one is find the range. And then B is create a frequency table. C construct a histogram. D can you find mode or median from histogram? Which type of representation was better for that? So these are the questions for you. You can pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Okay, so let's begin with finding the range of this data. So what is range? Range is maximum minus minimum, right? So it gives you spread of data. Now if you see the data carefully, you can identify what is the lowest mark here, right? So if you go through it, it seems that 61 seems to be the lowest mark. 94 is higher, 95, 98. So 98 seems to be the highest mark, right? So that is maximum and minimum, right? So we can find the range by subtracting 61 from 98. So we have 98 minus 61 and that gives us 7 and 3, 37. So 37 is the range of this data. Now the next question is create a frequency table. I hope you remember what a frequency table is. Well frequency table is like a tally chart with an additional column, right? So let us see how to create a frequency table for this kind of a data. So basically we are looking for uh, three columns. What I'm doing here is I'm combining the tally chart with the frequency table. Sometimes we do it separately. We first make a tally chart and then a frequency table, right? So, so we have two, three columns here. One is to write down the tally and then frequency. So frequency really mean how many times the same thing happens, right? Now what comes here in this column? When you're working in word data, you need the interval. So here we need to write interval. Now the question is how to decide this interval. That's very critical. And based on this interval, you will be constructing the histogram. So it makes it very important to decide what kind of interval we should be using. Well, you can answer this from the range. Range is around 40, right? 37 is close to 40. We should have four or five bars. We should not have too many bars to represent the histogram. So an interval of 10 is appropriate right so how did I get that value I kind of divided 37 let me show you a word here so I kind of divided 37 uh, divide by 5 approximately right so that gives me 7 point something right so 35 and 27.4 so 7.4 suggests that we could take interval of 5 or also 10 if I take interval of 5, I'll be having 8 bars. And if I take interval of 10, in that case, I will have 4 bars, right? Okay, 4 or 5. Let us see. So, I have decided to take interval. So, we have decided that we'll have interval of 10. Now, when I say interval of 10, looking into the marks, I can create my intervals like uh, 60 to 69. Does it make sense to you? Right. So that is, we have included 10 numbers here. And then 
from 70 to 79. Why did I start with 60? Well, because the minimum is 61, right? So all numbers will be included. So where will I end? I'll end at 100, right? 98 is the highest. So range is very important to understand. Okay, then we can have 80 to 89, 90 to 99. So that will work for us since the maximum marks is 98. So we have landed with four intervals. Now, as you read these numbers, the first one is 65. 65 comes in this, so we'll just draw a line here. 76, so you could just say we've taken care of this. Then we take 76 will come here, 82. 82 will go there, 87 will be in this interval, 80 again in this interval, 61, the first interval, 94, the last one, 95, again the last one, 77, it is between 70 and 79, 98, 70. So likewise, you have to go through all the numbers. 76, 69, 74. So 74 comes here. So we have already made four bars. It's good to cross it. That helps us to count, right? 78, 76, 84, 61. So again, we could cross it, right? So it becomes 5, 75, 90, 81. So 4 and 1, 5, 68, 77, 79. So again, fifth one, right? So this is our tally chart in which we are giving intervals along with the numbers, number of numbers in that interval. Frequency is really counting the numbers as such. So the marks scored in the interval 60 to 69 is how much? 5 plus 1, 6. So we write 6 here. In this interval, it is 5 and 5, 10. And then we have 5. And here we have 4, right? It's a good idea to add them up, right? So let's add and check if we really get 25. So 16 plus 5, 21 plus 4, 25. So that is correct. So we have included all these numbers. We have not really missed any, right? So that's perfect. So this is our frequency table. I hope the steps are clear. So to create a frequency table, it is important to decide on the interval. Once you decide on interval, then you can count how many data elements are there in each element. That gives you the frequency table. Okay. Now we need to construct the histogram. So I've left a very little space for that. Anyway, we'll do it here. So what we see here is that there are four different intervals and maximum is 10. Okay, so we'll just kind of, I'll squeeze in here in this, this portion, right? So, so we'll just squeeze it in here. Okay, let me push the page a bit. Right, so we need to have four bars to represent this data in the form of a histogram maximum is 10. So what we can do here is looking into the space we have, we'll say, let this be 10. Okay. Let this be 10 and this will be five. Okay. So these two lines will represent 10 and five for us. Right. Now histogram is always continuous. That is very important. Bar graphs are barbs which have space in between. So when you create a histogram, make sure that your data is continuous, continuously displayed. So we'll put a break here, right? So with this break, I mean, we can start with 60 right away. So right, we, let's say this is 60 for us, right? So this is 60. Now, let me push this page a bit more. And then we are going up to 100, right? So we have 60, let's say this is 70, 
80 90 and then 100 right so 90 to 99 will be covered here now along this horizontal axis we are displaying marks right so we'll write marks here and along the vertical axis we are displaying number of students so let me write number of students okay right now we'll just create bars to represent this information so the first one is 60 to 69 6 6 is slightly more than 5 so I'll kind of let's say this is 6 for us okay so 6 7 8 9 10 let's say this is 6 for us so that is from 60 to 69 so that bar represents 6 for us 70 to 79 is 10 so that is we'll extend this point here and then we'll go up to 80 and that is it so that is the next bar and all are adjacent so this becomes a histogram you get an idea right and then 80 to 89 is 5 so this is this 90 to 99 is 4 so slightly less right so that gives you the histogram for the given data I hope the steps are clear right so we should give a title to this and that histogram shows marks scored by students we'll write here of students okay so we have this histogram so we have done part C now part D is can you find mode or median from histogram hmm can you find mode or median from histogram no we can't since we merged all these numbers right in making tally chart and then frequency chart we don't know exactly what were the marks score right we don't know that it was 65 61 kind of like that right we just know that there are six students who scored between 60 to 69 so that's a problem so whenever you create a histogram you lose a lot of information right you lose a lot of information you cannot find from a histogram median mean or even mode right well as far as utility is concerned it gives you an idea that most students scored between 70 to 80 right most students store, scored between 70 to 80 so that's a good idea you can find that from histogram correct so it gives you a kind of look of what students score in this class you can say well most of the students score between 70 to 80 all the students had marks between 60 to 100 right so this is the information you get and it's visual very easy to see right so that is the advantage and disadvantage of course as you've seen you cannot find mean mode median from the histogram right so the second part obviously is which type of representation was better for that that means for calculating mean mode or median right so the answer for that is stem and leaf plot right so stem and leaf plot plot is better for doing the calculations so whenever you want to analyze your data and find mean mode and median is a good practice to use stem and leaf plot rather than bar graph or histogram right so I hope that gives you fairly good information about how to analyze data and how to represent it and also which type of representation is better and what are the advantages of one type over the other I'm Manil Kumar you can always share and subscribe my videos Post your questions if you have any. I'll be glad to answer them at the earliest. Thank you and all the best.